So my dear friends, I am here at this special feature of the Shepherd's Voice and today being Easter Sunday, I wish you a very happy Easter. You know, Easter is one of the biggest feasts of our Christian tradition. In fact, it is bigger than Christmas because Christ's resurrection is what gave meaning to our religion that a man who rose from the dead, a biggest miracle and at the same time a biggest confidence growing exercise for all of us to say that Christ is risen, Alleluia. And because Christ is risen, we have every hope, we have every promise that Christ will also be alive and active in all our lives. I wish you a very happy Easter, especially for all those who are at home, all those perhaps who have not been able to go for the Eucharist because of their sickness, illness, old age, those who are traveling. May God bless all of you and may the Easter joy be in your houses, in your celebrations, in your surroundings. Let me give a short message of the Easter. You know, we had a beautiful gospel today. The gospel of John chapter 20, verse 1 to 8. And it spoke of Jesus' resurrection. It's something very enlightening for us that Jesus was killed or crucified and there was not that much of anxiety, eagerness to meet him except the three ladies whom we are told went in search of Jesus, Jesus' body. Mary Magdalene, she goes to the tomb and finds that the tomb is empty and that is Easter for us. The empty tomb we call it. You know, I had a beautiful picture, a card that was sent to me and the card just showed one grave that looks empty from the side. But what was important was the steps that, the footsteps that were shown above the ground and going away from the, from the grave. That is Easter. Jesus walking away from his grave in order to start again, in order to strengthen us again. And therefore, Easter is a feast of hope is a feast of the promises, is a feast of encouragement for each one of us. Not everything is ended. And Easter is a feast that revives the people who are sad, the people who are discouraged, despondent, and they feel abandoned. There is nothing more to be done. Perhaps some of us also, in a situation like this, we are just recovering from the corona shocks, of our health, of our body, of our economic situations, of the job losses. Perhaps our school and children also have suffered a lot. And so this Easter comes back to us to say that Jesus is risen and therefore for Jesus nothing is impossible. What we need is to place our faith and trust in Jesus and he will work out what is needed for us what is special for us and perhaps much more than what we ask of him, Jesus will give us and that is Easter. Easter is a symbol of hope. You know the light candle that is the part of the liturgy of the Paschal night and in the darkness this light, this lamp or this candle is lit. That is the sign and symbol of Easter. The risen Christ who is the light of the world. So my dear friends, I wish you a very happy Easter and leave this message of hope, of love, of encouragement, of beginning once again in spite of all your failures, in spite of all your sickness, in spite of all your discouragements, in spite of all the disappointments that you have experienced, Jesus is alive and he is walking with you. You know, one of the gospels that comes soon after Easter is the Emmaus gospel. And at the road to Emmaus, Jesus is walking with his two disciples. Unfortunately, both of them 
are very despondent they are going away from jerusalem meaning to say that jerusalem is a close chapter is a sad chapter of their life they believed in jesus they believed in his power they believed in his miracles but now that he is dead now that he is crucified like a rogue like a robber what do we have we don't have anything and therefore they go back and jesus slowly joins their company as it were unknowingly and when they are talking he butts in one or two small things to say that it should not have been this it was correct it was that and they are surprised at his answers because they are very meaningful and jesus gives meaning to all the things that have happened in the past in the life of jesus in the life of the apostles the the miracles the teachings at the same time the suffering the death the crucifixion and so when jesus is almost about to go away the disciples stop him and said be with us stay with us because it is dark it is evening and jesus breaks the bread with them and that is how perhaps jesus also continues to live with us those who hope and trust in him i leave it to you at this asking god for a special grace for each one of you especially in your families my dear friends i have given you the good news of the visit of the apostolic nuncio to our archdiocese on 23rd and 24th of april the visit of our nuncio is very special because he comes as the ambassador of the holy father a special spiritual representative that the holy father perhaps cannot come and meet us but the apostolic nuncio as his representatives sends messages sends special instructions sends us special predilections of the holy father greeting us supporting us consoling us and in our difficulties also being part of us and so when the apostolic nuncio visits our archdiocese i would say it's a special occasion it's a sign of god's grace and blessings to us and most specially we see the presence of the holy father in some way in our apostolic nuncio the name of the apostolic nuncio is most reverend leopoldo girelli he is he is an italian and from about last 6 months he has been in india in the beginning he could not go much because of the corona restrictions but now it is so clear that he has decided to come to bangalore which means he has a special love a special affection and he surely aware of our problems of our difficulties of our joys and sorrows that bangalore has suffered a lot in the corona season and at the same time that the people in bangalore have been generous and so loving and that we have had difficulties of the anti conversion bill and so many other things are known to him and therefore his presence among us is an added assurance of the church of the holy father with us the apostolic nuncio's program on 23rd and 24th he's arriving on 23rd morning by flight and perhaps by about 10 o'clock he should be in our house and we will be having we will be taking the apostolic nuncio around the diocese a little and four important sort of public programs four important i would say five five important programs the first program will be the holy the apostolic nuncio will meet the priests the religious the representatives of the lay people some dignitaries the major superiors of the congregations and also some from the government our elected representatives in the panchayat in the corporation the assembly and the the presidents or the heads of the different associations we have many associations so all these will be one common group can understand we can't call the whole archdiocese so we have called the priests and religious and a few lay representatives i am i know that i cannot call everybody and everybody would have been happy to come but from every parish we have invited two representatives especially from those that have been elected recently from the parish council perhaps the parish council secretary 
or the joint secretary or some other person along with the parish priest. That's how we make your presence felt. And this program will be in St. John's Medical College, Bangalore from 11 to 12.30. The Apostolic Nuncio continues to remain and rest a little in the, in the St. John's quarters. And in the evening, we will move towards uh, St. Ignatius Church, Begur. That's in the close to Electronic City, because we are very happy that the Beagle Church is ready for inauguration and it was very coincidental that we were about to inaugurate it and the Nuncio announced his arrival into our Archdiocese and therefore the honour or the prestige of inaugurating and dedicating this beautiful church of St. Ignatius at Begur will be the privilege of the Apostolic Nuncio at five o'clock in the evening at Begur. As you know, the Begur church, for us, it's a beautiful, not only beautiful church, but it's a historical church uh, started by the, the first church was started by the missionaries. And the church name St. Ignatius comes from the Jesuit fathers who looked after, pioneered this church for long years. And therefore, as we carry on the tradition, of St. Ignatius, especially his missionary zeal, we, we are happy to have the blessing and inauguration and dedication done by the Apostolic Nuncio on Saturday, 23rd of April at 5 p.m. The next day, the Apostolic Nuncio, we are taking him around a little, the Archdiocese, it's a vast, there are six districts, we can't take him everywhere. And therefore, a little of Kolar, which is a mission district, and the KGF, where we know the very many poor people are there, especially after the closure of the mines. So we are taking the Apostolic Nuncio to these two places, Kolar and KGF. The Kolar program will be at 10 o'clock on Sunday, 24th of April, where we take the Nuncio to the Kolar Social Service Centre run by the St. Anne Sisters looking after the AIDS patients. And from there we go to the KGF, the Our Lady of Victory's Church Champion Reef, where as you know the church is big and as many people can be accommodated from KGF area. And there we shall be having the benediction and adoration of the Blessed Sacrament the adoration and benediction and the apostolic nuncio will bless the people there who are gathered and surely address them in a small way. After having lunch and KGF, we move towards Bangalore and in Bangalore at four o'clock on Sunday 24th of April, the apostolic nuncio will visit the cathedral. It's a historic moment for us as you know that our cathedral is not only almost 80 years old, but we have a historical background of many, many years. The one of the first cathedral was our own St. Patrick's Church. And before that, we were part of Mysore. So all these histories combined in our cathedral visit, where the apostolic nuncio will recite along with the people, the chaplet of divine mercy. As you know, 24th of April is the Feast of the Divine Mercy and the last day of the Navina also. And that is why we will be reciting the chaplet in the, in the cathedral at four o'clock in the evening. From there we move to the Infant Jesus Church, where at five o'clock we will be inaugurating the arch, what we call the Jubilee Arch. We are fortunate that the Infant Jesus Church is in existence for last 50 years, in fact 51 years and last year we could not celebrate the Jubilee and therefore we have the joy of having the Apostolic Nuncio to, to be partaking into the, participating into the Jubilee celebrations of Infant Jesus Shrine at 5 o'clock in the evening. So these are the important programs in between the Apostolic Nuncio will also visit 
small places and uh, the uh, the bishops emeriti bishops bishop alfonsus matthias bishop ignatius pinto we will also be visiting if possible small places where at this time we will also visit our what we call the night shelter that we have in the bishop's house we will visit the clergy home fathers and so we will try to make an all round visit of the archdiocese of the apostolic nuncio i request you to keep us all in prayers and perhaps have a glimpse of the apostolic nuncio wherever possible for you in these five programs that i have told you we wish that everyone cooperates everyone with joy and with feeling in our heart that the holy father and the church is with us and we are always part of the church the event of the apostolic nuncio will be online media and therefore those who cannot come surely will be able to see on online our different programs as i mentioned to you so that you can at least participate from a distance and later on we will also bring out a special issue of tabor magazine giving the highlights of the apostolic nuncio's visits and that would be something that we hold on to a memorial souvenir for each one of us of this historical visit of the apostolic nuncio may i now go to what happens to us after easter what we call the easter blessings of the houses you know we see in the gospels jesus soon after he was risen and he was seen among the disciples the first thing that he does is he goes in search of his disciples he is goes in search of those that have gone away that those who have strayed perhaps even those who have betrayed saint peter betrayed jesus he goes in search of him and the others and wherever he meets the disciples the first words of his are, peace be with you peace be with beautiful greeting and this is exactly what every priest does when he visits your house as part of the easter blessings it's not just sprinkling of the walls and the furniture that in the house he greets each one of you and he blesses each one of you and that is what we call the easter blessing and normally we try to do in the easter season i have spread over many days so that the parish priests are not too much sort of worn out by doing hundreds of blessings each day and sometimes it becomes just mechanical i have requested the our parish priests to take some more time to sit with the family to say a word of consolation a word of greeting and appreciation for the family and perhaps bless all the members of the family this is the paschal visit of the priest for which you look forward to and surely the uh, fathers will announce to you as which zone or which area they would be visiting so that you could be ready for their visit now i go to the question and answers once again as i said beautiful questions and there are four questions little learner questions i'm happy that our people are thinking and asking the right questions the first question is i am an arthritis patient i find it very difficult to kneel down during proclamation is it okay if i sit or stand at this time it's understood an arthritis patient cannot bend his or her knees cannot kneel down and our rituals are not this mechanical rituals that we have to do it in this way we have to do it in that way what is important is the disposition of our heart and therefore an arthritis patient is no way bound to kneel down perhaps if he can't also to stand he can sit and participate in the eucharist beautifully and very satisfactorily the second question is after the priest wishes after the priest washes his hands he says pray brethren that this sacrifice may be acceptable to god our father you remember that prayer that address of the priest and the question is does the congregation continue to sit 
or should they arise? At the online masses, people in various parts of the world stand up. So please clarify. You know, this part of the mass where the priest is inviting the people, pray, my brothers and sisters, that your sacrifice and my sacrifice, we say that it is preferable that the people also stand up. They stand up and join the prayer of the priest and that is why the standing up posture at this time is more appropriate. The third question is, why is there, why is there a different creed sometimes used at Mass now? This is a very intelligent question because those who have heard the creed in the Mass, there are two types of creeds. One is called the Apostles' Creed and the other one is called the Nicene Constantinople Creed. These are big words. The Apostles' Creed is that creed which in tradition in the Apostles, it seems when they met together after the resurrection of Jesus and they were going from place to place, the parts far away, never to meet again, never to come back again. And so that they said, what shall we take to the people? What, what is the message or rather what is the truths of the, our religion that we take to them. And they synthesize them into 12 articles of faith. And therefore, since the, its origin is from the Apostles, by tradition we believe, and we call it the Apostles' Creed. And the second is called the Nicene Creed. And uh, the Nicene Creed was very specially sort of discussed as there were a lot of controversies between the people as this should be said, that should not be repeated. There are some perhaps who said that Mary is not important. There are some who said the church is not important. And therefore the Nicene Creed in the year 325 took up this issue and synthesized all the 12 articles, the same 12 articles of the apostles, but with a little more explanations. And then this was confirmed in the Const uh, Council of Constantinople in the year 381. So these are the two creeds that we have. And so when do we say them? First of all, the Nicene Creed is said almost the whole year, throughout the year, except in the season of Advent and Lent. The season of Advent and Lent from olden times is a time when the new converts the, what we call the catechumens were prepared for baptism. In ancient church, this 40 days was a special time for them to for everyday study, everyday perhaps prayers, scrutinies, fasting. And with all this, they were prepared for baptism. And one of the important parts of that, of that rite was for them to know the truths of our religion, the 12 truths. Do you believe in God? In the beginning, it was in a question-answer form and they were asked and they had to reply with concrete examples from their life. That was the way that they had to respond. But later on, this became a, a prayer type or declaratory type of the creed and therefore in the season of Advent and the season of Lent, the church recommends that the creed of the apostles be recited at other times, the Nicene Creed can be done. The question is asked, which creed should the children learn? My answer is both. My answer is both. The shorter version, of course, we know and our children have known it well, but it's better also the, the other version of the creed is also taught to them so that they become rich in theology, rich in our belief of God and also the practice of our faith. I wish you a very happy Sunday. I wish you a very happy Easter season because this is a season of joy, season of hope, season of love and season that we proclaim to the others that Christ is risen. Thank you. My dear friends, please do share your feedback, your impressions and your experience or send a message to the email address as you find on the screen archdblr at gmail.com and you also have the phone number the mobile number wherein you can send your message or uh, whatsapp on this number archbishop is ready and waiting to answer your questions if you have any question any doubt 
any uncertainty or there's no clarity upon something, you can ask those questions and with the discretion that the Archbishop will surely answer these questions in the weekly feature Shepherd's Voice. Thank you and we look forward to the next episodes.